a special treat for you. We have Sister, well, Diane Tillman and Sister Annie with us this evening. And we're going to talk about the environment. And so Annie has been a Raj Yoga meditator for 18 years, and she's a retired school teacher. And I will let her do the honors of introducing to you Diane Tillman. Thank you so much. Om Shanti. Thank you, Elizabeth. Om Shanti. And um, well, it's my great pleasure and my great honor to introduce Diane Tillman. Um, I've known Diane for quite a few years now. And uh, I have to say that the Living Values resource books and implementing them as a teacher and then beyond teaching after I uh, retired has absolutely uplifted my life. And I feel the lives of those people close to me, my family, my friends, um, and uh, Diane is the most delightful person you'll ever meet. And uh, so I'm going to just read a very short bio on Diane, um, her accomplishments, just um, to give you just a little bit of an idea of all the amazing things that she has accomplished um, as a living values specialist. So Diane is the primary author of the award-winning Living Values Education series of books. And um, these books include the original five uh, books for the different age groups. And they have also been um, revised and uh, republished in uh, just uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, so the materials include um, also for children in school, they also include resources for street children, children affected by war, young offenders, at risk youth, and young people in need of drug rehabilitation. Diane is a licensed educational psychologist and marriage and family therapist. Diane worked in the school system in California for 23 years as a school psychologist, and she is the co-founder of Living Values Education, and that occurred in 1996. And she continues to develop content and training materials for the Association for Living Values Education International, which is uh, called ALIVE. In 2018, she updated and expanded the original LVE series of books, and they were published uh, just a, what, in two years ago, maybe? Um, starting in 2018. Okay. She also authored a children's book and uh, a Living Values Education Parenting Guide, which also um, has done a lot of excellent service for um, many people. Um, so she's a lead trainer for Alive and has traveled to more than 30 countries in all regions of the world to conduct these LVE trainings and seminars. And she's been at refugee camps and uh, many conferences, as well as uh, including UNESCO Street Children Agencies and the Ministries of Education. So she is on the Association of Living Values Educational International Board of Directors and is the president here in the United States of Living Values Education Program, Inc., which is the nonprofit Alive Associate in the United States. So I am very honored to be with Diane tonight and to um, give, give the introduction of Diane. And 
we will learn a little bit more about her brand new book that she just published and it just came out. Thank you so much, Annie. <laughs> Annie is um, also a Living Values Education Facilitator and as well as having taught children. And she's just absolutely lovely. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost twins. We're six days apart. <laughs> That's right. Same age. <laughs> oh, so Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays. And the title of the talk is, you know, caring for the self for others in the world. But um, we could also title it Environmental Gifts for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is the new book that Annie is speaking about. It's Living Values Education Activities for Caring for the Earth. And I decided to put it together very rapidly during my stay here at Anabuti because the United Nations COP27 conference in Egypt was taking place in early November. And this new unit that was written and included in the updated books uh, beginning in 2018 is called Simplicity and Caring for the Earth and Our Oceans. Before, um, we just had a unit on simplicity. And um, why I wrote the book is because many young people are very concerned about the earth. And um, there's actually a new category of psychological anxiety called climate anxiety. So there's quite a lot of concern about our, our earth and our oceans. And it's well-placed, actually. There needs to be. So this book is a book to help parents and teachers educate children of all ages. So there's the units from the books for children 3 to 7, 8 to 14, and young adults. Um, it's a very um, small book, not too big. And um, where would you like me to start, Ann? Well, how about if you start with the 3 through 7-year-olds? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so the first chapter is for the, the 3 to 7-year-olds and you know, you have them explore simplicity and um, take walks together and enjoy nature. And then there's stories and there's exercises and they learn how to send peace to the world. But I thought I would tell you a little bit of a story because there is a story of three uh, of two children and there's three stories and it's Rosa and Tina taking care of this little bird. Um, there was a little bird that got caught in a tree, and it was based on one of my experiences, because when I was in Sweden many years ago, there was this little tiny bird, and it was caught in a tree, um, and it had wire around one of its, around its claw, and then yarn had collected and strings, and so it was caught. And so my friend Joran held the bird and I very carefully undid the wire and um, we let the bird go and it discovered it could fly and that when it landed on things, it was freed. And so mm -hmm. the bird actually came back and um, perched one foot away from me and just went, chur, 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 chur. <laughs> the bird was so grateful. And so I put that into a story of a little boy and girl, and they help the little, the little bird. And then later on, they go to the store, their mother sends them, and they see a tree. And this tree had all these different kinds of birds, some that they had never seen before. And um, so I'm, shall I read you a story? Do you want to pretend that you're five? <laughs> I should probably have Annie read it. No. She was the kindergarten <laughs> teacher. So anyhow, as they pass um, the birds, one of the birds says, the little turn says to the other, 
see, that's them. They're the ones that help me. And so you get to the next story. And so, all the birds on the tree, even the fat gray and brown one, and the white one with the long curved neck that stood on the ground, solidly nodded. The turn had just said, I've never spoken to a human in their language before, but today I need your help. We need your help. Rosa said, our help? But we're just little children. Yes, said the bird, but you have good hearts and you know how to hear us. How can we help? asked David hesitantly. Well, said the little turn, we birds are having a lot of trouble slightly. We're getting hurt a lot more with all the trash. When the wire got caught around my foot, the thread and the yarn got caught on that, and I would get caught in the branches, and it would pull on my claw. That must have hurt, said Rosa softly. The little turn nodded. The fat white bird with pink feet cleared his throat. Squawk! He cleared his throat again. Squawk! Excuse me, I've never talked before, but I wanted to say that my brother got really hurt by a hook. It got caught in his cheek, and he died. I'm so sorry, said David. You must have loved your brother. The western gull nodded. We all have stories, said the big gray bird with a big, be- with a big beak and a deep voice. Are you a blue heron? asked Rosa. Our mama has told us about blue herons. Yes, I think that is what you humans call me, said the big tall bird with a kind look in his eyes. We all decided to come and talk to you because the animals... And the earth need your help. The earth, said Rosa and David together. The animals are getting sick, nodded the blue heron, and the earth. The little turn told the earth that you were loving little humans, ones with good hearts. So she agreed that we could talk to you. Wow, said David. How can we help, asked Rosa. All the birds started talking. Such a jabber you have never heard. They were so excited to be asked that they all started talking in their own languages. Squawks, chirps, shrills, and quacks were quite loud. Shh, said the blue heron in his deep voice. You'll attract attention. All the birds instantly stopped. You tell them little turns, said the blue heron, nodding encouragingly. Okay, said the little turn with a little chirp. Our earth and our animals are getting sick because the humans have forgotten about love and respect for each other and us and the earth. It's easier if I say it in a poem. Be friends with each other. Be loving and sweet to girls and boys and all you meet. Be friends to the birds, the cats and the dogs, the horses, the goats, the geese and the frogs. Pick up your trash. Don't pollute the water. Don't waste things, please. Don't poison the ground, the water, sky, or trees. Pick up your trash. Be a friend to each other, all countries and groups. Love and respect us animals and the earth, too. Recycle, don't waste. Pick up your trash. Humans are powerful and smart but learn to be kind and we'll all live safely and have a wonderful, glorious time. The colors of the earth will sparkle, sparkle. The meadows and flowers will bloom. We birds will sing happily then and not be in a state of gloom. (laughs) Rosa and David applauded and the birds all flapped their wings in approval. Well, all but the blue heron. He said in a deep voice, Well done, little turn. 
and all the birds became very quiet. They all looked solemnly at Rosa and David and seemed to be waiting. I promise to help, said Rosa. Me too, said David. <laughs> and so, Annie, those are, that's part of one story in the three to seven unit. That was wonderful, wasn't it? Everybody <laughs> just mesmerizing listening to the stories. So, um, do the stories continue then? Is it a, is a, a series for the 8 through 14 as well? And this is a way that we can teach uh, younger children and, and uh, also allow the a little bit older children and then the young adults to, um, to really think about and self-reflect because you have reflection points in the chapters mm -hmm. for the different age groups, mm -hmm. which I thought was really excellent. And also beyond the reflection points, then you have activities that they can think about uh, doing and sharing with others, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. themselves, families, mm -hmm. and um so i was shall i tell you about some of the stories yeah please do <laughs> yeah but annie yes you're right there is there are simplicity points about what simplicity is and there's activities um there's many activities there was activities about taking walks um um enjoying nature um writing poems to a tree. Um, there's activities about looking at advertisements and what they're trying to get you to believe. Um, mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of activities about the earth. And there's also um, things about what we can learn from indigenous cultures. But there's a lot of information then embedded in these eight stories. And there's eight stories that are like a, a, what the children now call a chapter book. <laughs> so there's eight little chapters, and each one of them has a lesson. And in these uh, chapters, it's a, uh, a girl and her brother. And um, in the first chapter, um, their father's out in his boat his fishing boat, and he hasn't come home in time. Diane, is this for the 8 through 14? Then? Yeah, 8 to okay, 14. Okay, so this is the, the next group. Yeah, the chapter book in the 8 to 14. Yeah, okay. And so anyhow, he hasn't come in because he's helping a whale be free from a net. And so the children get to help father and his mate and the mother. They all um, come into port and they end up helping the father release the whale. And then um, goes on from there. Um, there is a gull that is hurt by a plastic bag. And so they start talking to their parents and it's time for an environmental unit. And they go into, we go into many, many things. Like most children don't know, and many adults even don't know that there's toxic plastic guy rays in the oceans. There's um, five really, really large ones. One of them in the middle of the Atlantic in the Pacific Ocean, actually, is, um, you know, as large as the state of Texas. They're, they're so large. Imagine what our beaches would look like if those sky rays, if those, all that plastic debris started to spread equally. But how did that plastic get there? And of course, we humans have created the climate crisis, and hence we can resolve it. Um, and so in the 814, they learn about the impact of plastic on animals. For example, 43% 43 of um, 
animals in the ocean, dolphins, whales, um, seagulls, etc., consume plastic. And so like when a sea lion consumes plastic that's large enough, it blocks their ability to benefit by what they're trying to eat, and they end up starving. Um, very often it's because of that consumption. And so they end up learning um, many other things. They learn about um, the ocean and that there's 405 dead zones in our ocean currently. And that in these dead zones, not only are there not any fish, but the kelp forests are dying or have died. And they learn that the kelp forests provide 50% of the oxygen to human beings. And then what causes there to be dead zones? So I'll read you part of the story. Okay, yeah, Annie? that's wonderful. Okay. So, but there's activities. They talk about trash, for example, the solution, the values to not create trash. They talk about what is if there's trash in, in lakes and rivers in their area and what problems does that cause and what can they do and what are solutions. And so they think of solutions, um, which is very lovely. So here's one. Um, so they, this is how far we've gotten the story. And Katie then, then told them about Miss Bennett's science class on the environment. So this is how they learn about the dead zones. She told us, said Katie, I think Katie's about 12, that there are dead zones in the ocean where there is little or no oxygen due to fertilizer runoff and nitrogen pollution. She said that there are 405 reported dead zones and that they're doubling every 10 years. That's terrible, said George. So what happens in these dead zones? There isn't enough oxygen for most fish to live. Good thinking, said Katie. Unfortunately, the fertilizer runoff and nitrogen pollution and pesticides kill the kelp. She showed us some pictures of these really cool kelp forests. They are so beautiful. The kelp forests provide food and shelter to thousands of species and 50% of the world's oxygen. So all of this is in the story. And as a result of that story, then later on in the story in another chapter, they uh, end up planting an organic garden because then there's not the nitrogen runoff. But the pesticides, the nitrogen runoff, the fertilizers are not just affecting the oceans. They're affecting our groundwater. They're affecting our bodies. They're affecting our health. And so um, Annie and I were discussing Christmas gifts. And one of the Christmas gifts that you could give to care for yourself or your children and the earth is you could give, your family could decide to give a gift of going organic as much as possible. It would benefit your body because you wouldn't have the buildup of the toxins, but it would benefit the planet. Um, it would benefit <laughs> the water. It would end up benefiting the ocean. So it's a beautiful thing to do. And I know that um, in the recent inter intergovernmental panel on climate change, which is the document that hundreds of scientists in many countries around the world work on and produce every three years. The last report, which was released um, this year in the spring, was very damning in terms of what was happening in terms of the incredible increase um, in the world temperature. And uh, the United uh, Nations Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez was very concerned and he said, you know, if we're not careful, we'll be doubling. You know, we're trying to keep it to 1.5 Celsius above pre-industrial levels. But if we're not careful, it will double and then the planet will be 
uninhabitable. So the report was very bad. And he said, governments need to step up. Well, yes, government needs need to step up and we need to speak out. But we as consumers vote with our pocketbook. When we start, have you noticed how much organic food is now in a regular market? It keeps increasing. We vote with our pocketbook and they are paying attention. This will help everything. The birds, um, the bees, <laughs> the wildlife, um, because then they won't be eating the pesticides. So just little changes that we do are really, really significant. So Diane, is there a benefit then to, since we're talking about organic gardens and eating organic, is there an advantage in terms of, we, we've heard of the carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. um, is there an advantage to uh, being a vegetarian or eating more vegetarian types of mm -hmm. food mm -hmm. than meat and uh you know, mm -hmm. chicken and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Does that help our earth? Um, dramatically, Annie. Um, being vegetarian is, or being vegan even more so, is really, would be an incredible gift that people can do. I mean, the UN advises reducing your meat consumption. Um the World Health Organization says vegetarianism is the healthiest diet, but it reduces the carbon footprint dramatically. Um, one, if you're organic. Um, two, uh, methane gas is um, the second greenhouse gas that is raising the climate of the earth. The first is carbon dioxide. That's about three-fourths of the greenhouse gases that are warming our earth. The second is methane, and that's mostly cows. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of the, um, for example, in California, a good deal of our water is used by, I believe only 14% is used by people, and the rest is agriculture. And a lot of that goes into feed. In California, for example, alfalfa, which takes incredible amounts of water. So if people are vegetarian, there will not be as much um, water usage and we're in drought. Um, but the Amazon is currently be, being dis, uh, deforested because of the cattle production there. And uh, forests are very important to combat climate change because um, the Trees eat the carbon dioxide and um, give out the oxygen, which we need. So it's a symbiotic relationship and something that's really important. So there's many ways that it would help, as well as it would help the animals. <laughs> but shall I read you a little bit of a story? Sure. Okay. So let's see if I can find it here. There's a story. Um, um, so this is Katie again, one of the other stories. Um, later in the week, Katie announced at dinner, I've decided on my answer to Mrs. Bennett's homework question about one thing we can all do that would most benefit the earth. And Mrs. Bennett had asked them all to think of one thing. So they all had many different answers. What's that, said Mama? Be a vegetarian that eats organic food, said Katie. How would that help, said George, looking puzzled. Well, said Katie enthusiastically, if everyone was a vegetarian, then people wouldn't fish and we wouldn't be overfishing and killing millions of fish. And if we all ate organic food, then we wouldn't be poisoning the ocean and creating dead zones. And the oceans would have healthy kelp healthy help for us and enough oxygen to create a healthy ocean and enough fish again for the whales and for the whales and, and the whales and dolphins wouldn't be getting trapped in nets because no one would be using nets. 
She said that in one sentence. <laughs> You've really been thinking about this, said Papa, looking a little surprised. And said Katie with a big smile, that's not all. If everyone was a vegetarian, then we wouldn't be deforesting the Amazon because the production of cattle and the demand for meat and the output of greenhouse gases would be less. So the whole planet would be healthier. Good reasoning, said Mama. But you're not really going to do it, are you? Asked her little brother, George. George was eight. Do what? Asked Katie. Be a vegetarian. Well, said Katie, with a pause and a pleading look at her parents, I was thinking that maybe I can't be a vegetarian that eats only organic food. But I could be a vegetarian that eats as much organic food as we can get. She took a deep breath and she looked at her mama and papa. I would really like to try it. Can I, please? I really do think it would help our planet. Mama looked at Katie and then at papa. Luke? Papa looked at mama. It's okay with me. She has some great reasons. Is it okay with you? Oh, Katie, said Mama with a tiny worried look. You would have to promise me that you would eat healthy. The World Health Organization says it's the healthiest diet for human beings, said Katie. If you eat healthy, said Mama firmly. Promise? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's okay with me, Mama. Yeah. Katie sprang, sprang up and gave Mama and then Papa a big hug. I am proud that you've really thought about it and want to help our planet, said Mama. Papa said, is it okay if I'm a vegetarian with her for two months and see if it works for me? <laughs> he looked at Mama with a quizzical look. Mama just laughed. As she looked at her husband. Then she looked at her son with a questioning look. George? Not me, cringed George. It wasn't my homework. Okay, laughed Mama. Two veggies and two non-veggies. But if you don't, if you two don't eat healthy, I'm changing my mind. <laughs> so that was that story. Um, I I was I went really went through the book uh, a couple of weeks ago to read it completely through. And I was really uh, touched and impressed with the fact that the book has many, many references to, uh, to carbon footprint, to um, many different aspects of climate change and, and the things that are happening and what we can do. And I stayed up really late because it was so fascinating. Um, I, I think it uh, opened my eyes a lot, especially with the Amazon forest. I mean, we hear about these things. We know they're happening. But if we do a little research and we read more about what is going on, it, um, it really goes a lot deeper and it allowed me to really um, embrace uh, really sticking with and creating uh, promises, simple things for myself that uh, I would stick with because of uh, the devastation really that's going on with our planet. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciated the fact that there were a lot of links in the um in the book for people to really dive deeper into that particular topic uh that's in the book um so thank you for that that's my pleasure yeah it's really <laughs> important i learned a lot writing the book it was good fun for me i really enjoyed it um, yeah so you have also then have uh, the adult version. And what is, uh, 
what is added there in, in the young adult? It's actually not just young adult. I feel it's for everyone mm-hmm. or any age adult to really look through and read. I feel that way actually about the other living values education, that one for young adults, it's really very beneficial for, you know, any adult of any mm-hmm. age, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh, what is included in the, in the, um, young adult, the age, what is it, uh, 16, 18 to? 15 and up. Okay, 15. But yes, I agree with you. I think a lot of adults don't understand a lot about climate change. And the ease with which we can just change the way we do things slightly. Mm -hmm. We may have a little jar of possible gifts to give to yourself, your children, and the world. Christmas gifts and the planet. But, um, you know, there's so many very simple things you can do um, that are quite easy. That are quite easy. Um, I'm going to go into a, a couple of them now, if you don't mind. Yeah. I was thinking as I'm sitting here, um, well, I could I could go into the young adults first, I guess. Um, but there's there's so many things we can do. But this awareness of the importance of our planet and the importance of our relationship with nature. So this time of year, a lot of parents can be stressed about Christmas and. Basically, what we're saying is that there are ways that we can not only give gifts to um, our children, but really having them learn about the planet and having them do things to help the planet is an incredible gift because we're heading towards a tipping point and um, the more we can be a friend of the earth and the more we can help our children be empowered to know that they can make a positive difference, the more their anxiety is going to go Mm -hmm. down. And in this book, there's many, many um, activities and questions and things to explore, but they're very simple to do but they can get involved in project and and make a difference. And it can also change a little bit the family orientation. It can give you something to discuss together, to bond at together, which is really wonderful. Um, And in terms of Christmas shopping, you might want to reconsider the Christmas shopping. For example, Um, buy less plastic. You know, there's so many plastic things that are toys. But how many plastic things does one child need? Can you cooperate with other parents if you feel that your children are outgrowing toys? Maybe you have a little community group and you can share toys or give toys to the children that are younger and parents that have older children can give some of those toys to you. But simplicity, buy less, but buy less plastic. And maybe some of the gifts could not be things because how many things do we need? Simplicity in the units for eight to 14 and young adults are also lessons on what the advertisers want you to believe, that this is the color of the season, that you need to dress this way. As we all know, the advertisers want you to think that you must drive this, drink this, and smell like this in order to be okay. Mm -hmm. So how about instead um, getting an $8 book? You priced it really low. Or you can download it free on the livingvalues.net website. Um, 
but read stories with your children. Have them get involved. See where their interest lies. Don't force them to do anything, but let them become enthusiastic, and they will automatically once they find out that they can make a difference. In many countries around the world, children and young adults have been protesting. Just before the uh, pandemic, they were doing it um, Friday throughout Europe. It was really very beautiful. Um, So there's so many things they can do. So maybe for Christmas, one of the things can be like a card. Um, maybe it's a card to go somewhere or to have a nature outing, or um, maybe the family decides you want to be a friend of nature more and you want to do a little bit of camping. So maybe a family gift um, might be a tent and to go camping. And um, But little cards to do things rather than just buy things. But be mindful of the plastic consumption. There is another um, gift um, that I would highly recommend. And it's very, very simple to do. Um, But it's a really important one. Try to find the page. This is in the um, young adult section. But in the young adult section, there is a section on uh, a chapter Um, the, the, in the young adult section, there's information about, you know, the Paris Accord, the Paris Agreement that was made where the countries um, agreed not to raise the temperature more than 1.5 Celsius below uh, industrial, pre-industrial levels. Um, and there's Gutierrez's speech to children of the world recognizing their concern. And, um, but there is also information about what causes climate change. And so the information about the carbon dioxide, the methane, the uh, uh, nitrogen oxide, and the fluorinated gases. But the carbon dioxide is really mostly the fossil fuel use and deforestation. And so in the fossil fuel use, petroleum. So petroleum for cars. So your next car, can it be hybrid or electric? Um, Rather than fossil fuels, does the family have the ability to be more solar? But also, do you know that in this country in one year, this was shocking to me, the processing of of 17 million barrels of oil to make bottles of water produce more than 2.5 million tons of carbon dioxide. And it took three liters of water to produce one liter of bottled water. That if you're going to make a pint of plastic bottle with two cups of water in it, it actually um, has a total carbon footprint equal to three ounces of carbon dioxide, which is truly amazing. So what that means is you would be contributing incredibly if your whole family, and you could try to convince all your friends too, (laughs) simply stops drinking water from plastic bottles of water and you stop buying them. Imagine 17 million barrels of oil. Um, About um, 8 to 10% of the total oil supply goes into making plastic. Isn't that amazing? So I don't do plastic. Um, One of the reasons I don't drink out of plastic is because part of the plastic particles actually go into your body and they're really bad for you. 
So that's one reason. But the other reason is this. And it's so easy not to drink water out of plastic bottles. It's much worse for you. It's worse for the environment. It's worse for everything. And it's a lot less expensive to just get a water filter. Uh, yeah. Much, much less expensive. And also, if you're traveling, you can just get a, a container, you know, like a steel container. I, mm-hmm. I have several mm-hmm. that you can clean out, wash, and use again. It's yes. The whole reusing mm-hmm. the items that, that you have for drinks and mm-hmm. plates. I have a couple of uh, metal ones that I carry with me and at home. Uh, I'll take an old juice bottle made out of glass and I'll fill yeah. that with water if I'm going on a trip. Right, yeah. You know, and I, I'll have a little box in the back of the car that has my my bottles of water at metal or glass. And it's so easy to commit to that. I remember <clears throat> there's a young man that helps me um, with um, chores and, um, you know, painting and uh, termite damage repair and all these different things. And he would always bring a plastic bottle of water and it's so bad for him. And um, <laughs> took me you know, I said, you know, Danny, why don't you? Da, 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 da. So one, two, three, four times. So finally, I just sat down with him, and I said, "Do you know that it takes two quarts of water to make a bottle of water, and that one it takes one third of the amount that's inside that bottle of oil to produce that plastic bottle?" He was amazed, and I said, "Please," I said. Use glass, use metal, use something else. Um, I will buy you one if you like. And you know, he's never appeared on the property without his jug of water since then. He got the message. <laughs> yeah, I think people just really need information oftentimes. They have no idea of the impact. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's even hard to put your wrap your mind around what, you know, that that much oil, petroleum that's needed to create one little bottle. Mm -hmm. And then when we think of the billions, probably billions of plastic bottles that people use during the year. Yes. And they don't think about it. And some people use it as their, uh, as their main source of water, unfortunately. And but the plastic particles going into your own body is very damaging. That reminds me of uh, when you were talking about the gyres mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. how the plastic in those gyres, it, it because it's swirling. I was learning this in the book. Uh, the particles get really, really fine. You can't really see them, but they go into the the fish absorb them, and. Um, I think it was saying that even if um, uh, the fish is alive, if that fish is eaten by a human, they're ingesting those particles of plastic. We have reached the point at this point in time where they say that we all in this country have plastic in our body. And it's not natural. (laughs) So I just got a, a... a note that if there are any questions in um, how much time do we have left Satish? I don't have a till the end. Okay. Okay. So let's just, let's go through our, um, so anyhow, there's stories in here. There's all kinds of activities. They do a project. They can plant trees. Um, They can do all kinds of things. And if you're a child, can think about um, what to do in terms of what they're interested in. And it gives the family a whole focus. Family time is so important, you know, and the stories are filled with camaraderie and, you know, somebody gets teased when she's vegetarian. So, and then how everybody starts cooperating with the project. 
So it's really, really a lovely thing. Oh, so question? Really? Okay. Um, someone was asking the question about what about plastic straws? Um, are they acceptable and how do you substitute them? Um, if you wouldn't mind, never use or accept a plastic straw again. Um, there are glass straws that are available. Um, and some people, um, I've heard that if you go into certain bars, that they actually give you a macaroni straw. <laughs> so there are substitutes. You can get oh, yeah. a glass straw. And I was just thinking, I think I do have a straw, but it's like a very, very hard plastic, but that's probably not good either. Um, well, if you have one, I think the commitment has to be is not to have single-use plastic. Okay, that's you know, a good point. I Diane. think it's very easy to reduce our, our plastic in the house um, in terms of single-use plastic by 90% easily. Um, for example, I do have some plastic forks and spoons in the house, but I wash them and I put them away. And when somebody has something to go, they're given a plastic one and they're asked to promise to reuse it. So, um, you know, no single use plastic. Okay, that's a really good point. Um, there's another question. Um, someone asked uh, Diane, what is your suggestion in buying fruits and vegetables at the grocery store without using plastic bags? Shopping. Um, I think it's really difficult to do that, but um, there are many ways. Um, now that the pandemic is, um, the restrictions have been eased, um, there is actually many different things on the market that you can get. There's some stores actually have um, uh, plastics that are recycled and that are compostable yeah, yeah. so those aren't so bad but there's also little net bags that you can buy and reuse so I have a couple of sets of four net bags and that I can use those and I just um, put them in a container and wash them in in a little zip thing and throw them into the wash occasionally right and then I I don't buy like when there's lettuce in a plastic container I never buy it, but I will buy the cello wrapped um, lettuce, for example. So, um, you know, you'll find ways. And then I um, mentioned to stores, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't buy this at your store. I'll go up to the manager at Trader Joe's, for example, and say, oh, I'm so sorry, you're packaging this in plastic still. You know, I really like that you're not doing that with zucchini anymore. Because, you know, I really like to buy things that are... Um, not plastic, but are recyclable or compostable. And they get it and they start changing it. It's really changed. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. So we, that's another thing we can do is mm -hmm. speak out at our grocery stores mm -hmm. and, um, and because otherwise they don't know. And if there are enough people that are speaking and um, saying that, they'd like an alternative, then they're more likely to do that because they're in the business to make money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Any other questions? Oh, great. Silicone oh. straws are also good because they don't break down into plastic. Thank you, Fern. I was trying to think of what your straws were. Oh, yeah. Okay, did we cover all our gifts for the world? Any more questions? I think yeah. Annie mentioned this one, be simple, reuse, recycle. I think we've done all of them, Annie. Really? Yeah, we've done really great. There must be one. Okay, any more <laughs> questions up there? Otherwise? Oh, yeah. Oh, the, where are the books available? Uh, on Amazon. So if you just look up Diane Tillman, uh, author, you will find all of the books, correct? Most of them. Most mm -hmm. of them. 
Okay. And it's only $8. We made it very inexpensive yeah. so that almost anybody could afford it. And the <laughs> nice thing too, one of the nice things, there's so many of them. Um, this is nice too. What we can do daily list. This yep. is, this is really good. Diane. Yeah. There's a huge a list, list in things, here. So, you know, practical things we can do. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, I'm just looking at one pack food in reusable containers when going out, use paper instead of plastic bags, you know, um, and try growing some of our own food. We can do that. Echo friendly detergent. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so much better for your body. Echo friendly cleaning products. So it's a real gift to you. For caring your, for yourself, for your children, their health, um, for your family and our world. Almost everything we do for the planet benefits us in the long term and the short term. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, Is it time? Okay. Diane, why don't you do yeah, what I wanted to say? And then, Diane, you can lead us in a in a in a uh, meditation for the earth. Okay. Yeah. And, but what I wanted to, the, that's what I was thinking is that the back of the book uh, has all these beautiful meditations, you know, beautiful that you can share with your family and, um, you know, and your friends and uh, it, and so much of it relates to, um, well, it relates to loving ourselves, loving our, family loving our planet and and uh just uh so much gratitude you know and i have a lot of gratitude for diane <laughs> <laughs> i just uh it's the the resources are really wonderful so i hope you you um at least uh pick up this as a gift for yourself for the holidays for yourself your family and and your community and, and your planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's so important to do this now because if we don't do it, um, the yeah. earth will be very, very different um, in a few years. Um, there's already so many refugees and now there's um, increasing millions of refugees um, that are climate change refugees. Because as our earth is damaged, then certain places don't have the water. But there's some, also some incredible initiatives. For example, the BKs have this project called Green Drops of Peace. And they are building a corridor from one side of Africa to the other, from Senegal and then going eastward. And it's a corridor of green. Mm -hmm. And the UNDP, the United Nations Development Program, is really helping with it. And um, another UN agency. And they're teaching people how to plant and nurture these trees. But they're planning to do this. Um, they are doing it. They're in process. And then the BKs are helping with... Um, Peace, and then um, some of them are doing living values with some of the peace work um, because it's very important. You know, we've been talking a little bit about simplicity and caring for the earth, but other things are equally important. Peace, for example, or harms our planet so very, very much. Okay, so let's meditate. Yeah. Uh, everyone sit comfortably. Are we going to play a little bit of music or not, Satishba? Okay. Sit comfortably. And let 
let yourself be still inside. Be aware of how your body is feeling. Breathe. Let yourself begin to relax. Breathe in the light of peace. Let the body relax. Breathe out any tension. And breathe in the light of me. This peace is quiet and safe. It reminds me. I enjoy the quietness with them. And I touch the peace at the core of my being. I am naturally full of peace and love. The more you continue to concentrate on me, the more that peace will go outward to nature. Imagine mountain. The meadows, and that peace flows, and that love flows to the mountains and meadows, to the tree, the sky. Streams, to the dolphin in the ocean, and the whale, and I stay in my peace, connected to the highest one. That peace and that love 
blow out to our entire earth and all our creatures. Large and small. Concentrate on peace. And see that light surrounding the planet. It flows to the rivers and the ocean, to the trees and meadows. To the air we breathe. Let your peace deepen. The earth is nourished by these vibrations. You are one who is helping the earth be healthy again. The earth will be healed in time. I picture the light of peace around the earth. And our beautiful oceans being healthy again. Feeling relaxed and peaceful. And full of love. I bring my attention. to where I am sitting. Wiggle your toes. Move your shoulders. And let yourself be present. Here's a little uh, meditation. This was the one for young adults. But there's little meditation for all the different ages, including little kids. Wonderful. Awesome. <laughs> Diane, thank you so much for joining us this evening and sharing the love that you have for the world. Mm, thank you. Yeah. And uh, we all benefited from that. And um, I hope you all took something or maybe a few things that really make a difference for you that are simple in this Christmas season and moving forward. Anna, you had suggested that they want, may want to see the list of books. Did you want Satish to show that? Oh, um, sure. Satish, um, do you have that list of uh, where you can show it on the screen so people can see the books? The uh, PowerPoint. 
Annie had suggested that we do a PowerPoint presentation of all of LBE. Just books, to see the book. Just so you can see them. Yeah. These are resources that um, you can get on Amazon or you can download them free on the livingvalues.net website. Um, Here's the latest. So this is the one, and um, we did this for COP27 in Egypt for the UN conference. And um, we're asking different organizations to put it on their website free of charge, and we're giving it to them free of charge. Because the whole point is to all of us to, to have us join together in making our earth healthy. Annie had suggested we show you some of the other books. These are the ones, um, the original set of books, the first set, um, the first materials in 1997 were the Educator's Kit. And then these were the five books written later on. And um, those first sets of Living Values activities books had 12 values. And these are the 12 values that were in those books. Hello. A new set, set of books starting in 19, uh, in 2018. Um, there, I included a, some, I added on to the simplicity value with simplicity and caring for the earth and our ocean because it was obvious by then that the climate crisis was a real issue and um, children were getting increasingly concerned and that instead of being in despair, it's important to empower them to know that they can make a positive difference. So that was the one for three to seven. This is the one for young adults and then the one for, sorry, eight to 14 and then young adult. Um, two of these are also in Spanish, um, in Portuguese, and they're currently being translated, and Vietnamese, and they're currently being translated into uh, Malay and uh, French. And these are the eight values in those new books. And the other day they gave me a call and said, Diane, that was book one. When are you going to write the book two? And I said, uh, I'll begin it next April. So hopefully I will begin it next April. I'm sure I will. But book one has a lot to offer, <laughs> you know, the first in, in, so she expanded each one. So that it's actually two years, right? What happened is that um, the, before the books were not so big and these books are much larger. And I realized that um, the revised copy was going to be 500 pages long. And I realized the teacher would get carpal tunnel. So I just cut the book in half and published it. Yeah. <laughs> but they're so rich. I mean, there's just so much in just one book. And well, there was a lot of years of learning. We learned a lot in those 20 years. So. Is the, is the uh, parenting book on here too? Yeah, it is. Oh, here it is. This is a real treasure as well. I've uh, used it many times just uh with grandchildren and friends with children and with myself. <laughs> it's for parents and their and uh and your families. And it's such a treasure. Um so there's there's different sections. There's a section on um nurturing with love and wisdom. There's a, that's eight chapters, another eight chapters on discipline with peace and respect. And then there's a chapter on taking care of your uh, mind and your body. And then there's a, a whole section that's, I think, just three chapters. And then another section 
on uh, nurturing your family, keeping the flow of love going with your partner, um, building gratitude in the family, um, how it's important to give up our negative uh, habits and what those can be and how quickly they lead to a divorce if you don't do that. And then there's a section on um, preventing problems such as sexual abuse and drug use and dealing with current problems such as homework, et cetera. And then there's a chapter on uh, what to do when there's been a lot of anger in the family. And then there's several chapters on um, exploring peace activities, love activities, and respect activities with the children. So it's, it, there's a Real lot of pleasure. chapters. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and it's for children from, I'd say, two to young adults. Uh, may I ask a question? Training guide. You don't need this, but if you can, if you like. Uh, 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 I think it'd be wonderful. Yeah, this training guide. That one took forever to build. And then other, you... there's also um, um, other resources. Those books that you saw are the books that are published. Now, these books are for people at risk, and they are not published. You have to actually take a very detailed training in, in order to get a copy of the book. But this was um, Living Values, Activities for Refugees and Children Affected by War. And um, we did these in refugee camps in Thailand with the Karen tribe people. And it was uh, one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. We went back into the camps for five years until another NGO uh, actually took it over and put it in the regular social studies curriculum. But when we arrived in the camps, the children were so traumatized and distressed that they wouldn't even move. They'd just stand completely still and watch you for hours. And they did a lot of fighting. Um, and, within, and the teachers would beat the children. and Everybody sort of hit each other in that camp. Um, <laughs> And anyhow, after two years, all the hitting stopped, all the killing stopped, all the fighting stopped, and the children would play and make spontaneous toys and laugh, mm -hmm. and the parents and teachers were caring. It was the most incredible transformation I've ever seen within two years. It was and beautiful. That was, with that the was teachers being trained. With the teachers the being trained. We did a nine-day training with a teacher with living values because they were traumatized, and we had to sort of help them understand how to do these lessons and how to deal with their own pain in order to deal with the pain of child, the children. So we went in and trained 36 teachers and then 24, and this was for 11,000 people. Now the section leader told me the biggest difference, my section leaders used to spend all their time solving fights, and now they don't need to spend any time. Wow. Because there aren't any fights. It was amazing. And he said, we captured three Burmese um, a few months ago, and we didn't kill them. And I just sort of looked at him, and I said, that's very good, saw Peter. <laughs> was flabbergasted. <laughs> okay, next slide. And then another one was for street children, and this has been another fabulous project where, you know, people can change. They can heal themselves. They can learn new skills. Um, their behavior can be completely different. It was amazing how the level of violence went down and the, um, the children learned how to take care of themselves. And, um, of course, it's good for children to not get targeted um, by sex traffickers or labor traffickers. And then another uh, resource is Living Values Activities for Drug Rehab. And the Ministry of Labor in, in Vietnam said that this was the most successful drug rehab program in the country after three years of use, which is very kind. So it's still being used in Vietnam in private and in governmental clinics. Heroin is the drug of choice in care of heroin in Vietnam. Additional LVE resources.
are for miles. Um, decided it should be for adults as well of all ages. And so he's developed a program so that anybody online can become an LPE facilitator and learn to have their study groups, learn to do study groups, even if they aren't educator. And then we also, I also develop for um, uh, helping people address difficult situations because um, Afghanistan wanted something special. And so I don't know how it's been since the war, since the end of the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, military being there. But uh, while the military was there, LVE was being used in 134 schools in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Education is so important. I wish all of them could continue. So thank you for caring for the earth and our oceans and yourselves and your children and all of humanity. So it's been a pleasure to be with you, Annie. It's been a delight for thank everyone, I'm sure. Thank you. And so thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Satish. And yeah. thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, thank you. And it looks like we don't get to wave goodbye. Oh, no, I guess we, we do, do get to wave goodbye. So. <laughs>